Good morning and welcome to our Good Friday Reflection. There was a time in this country, not that long ago, when nothing drew a crowd like a good public execution. Apparently the origins of the northern phrase Gala Day, which means a, a kind of holiday or festival, is an abbreviation of Gallows Day, when there would be a fairground set up at the site and the scene of a hanging. There would be picnics, food for sale, games, all kinds of stalls and sideshows. It would be a proper day out. In these days of social distancing, that sort of party sounds like a dream from a far-off country. Although, to be fair, I'm not sure how many of us would really want to go to a public execution these days. But one of the reasons for making executions public has always been to act as a deterrent, a warning, an example of what could happen to you if you broke the rules and were caught. The executed man is an example. Don't do as he did. Public execution also adds an element of shame, disgrace and humiliation to the criminal's punishment. Jesus' death was public and painful and protracted. These are three things that you really want to avoid when you are dying. I hope my death, and yours too when it comes, is not public or painful or protracted. I hope it's the opposite, quick and calm and quiet. And I hope that it, you will be surrounded by family and friends and you will know the love of God. The classic image of Jesus' execution is of him crucified on the top of a hill with two other criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus is at the top, at the summit, and the other two crosses are at either side, slightly lower down. Now hold that image in your head, because we'll be coming back to it in a moment. According to the Bible, Jesus says seven things when he's on the cross. And we could spend a long time looking at each one of those seven. They can all be taken literally at face value, but they also have symbolic significance, metaphorical meaning. You can dig deeper into their depths. But in this brief reflection, we won't be looking at all seven, but just at one of them. The thing that Jesus says to the criminal who is being crucified next to him. So here's the reading. It's from Luke's Gospel, Luke chapter 24. Two other criminals were taken away with Jesus to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, with the other two criminals, one on his right and one on his left. One of the two who was hanging there beside Jesus began to insult him. Aren't you supposed to be the Messiah? Prove it by saving yourself, and save us too while you're at it. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? even when we've been sentenced to die? In our case, it's fair enough. We're getting exactly what we asked for. We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A question. What does Jesus say to the one who mocks him? The answer is nothing. Nothing at all. Jesus just ignores him. The scene is very simple. One of the two other men there insults Jesus, and Jesus says nothing. But the other one turns on him. Not on Jesus, on the one who'd sneered at Jesus. And he attacks him for his outburst. Then he talks to Jesus. He says, remember me, remember me when you become king. So that one man speaks to both of the other two. 
to Jesus and to the other criminal. The other criminal speaks only to Jesus and Jesus speaks back to the one who spoke to him, asking to be remembered. Jesus replies to him, I'm telling you the truth. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Now in any other springtime, I would be looking for an opportunity to get some fishing done. Fly fishing for trout on a small stream in the middle of nowhere. And my favourite place to do that is in the Cotswolds. Fire up a motorbike, head down to the green rolling hills and see if I can catch anything. Of course, this year I'm trying hard not to catch anything. We all are. But there are hills in the Cotswolds where the very small streams start their journey to the sea. They get bigger as they run down towards the valleys and they join together with other small streams to form small rivers. And these small rivers join together to form larger rivers and so on and so on. Eventually they go on out to the salty tides and the ocean waves. But if you stand at the very top of some of those hills, the water going down one side will end up in the Thames. It will flow east and it will arrive in London and go past the Houses of Parliament and eventually out towards Europe, the Thames estuary between Kent and Essex. But the rain only has to land a few feet away and it will end up going many, many miles in the other direction. Those streams go completely the opposite way. They flow west and they join with the drainage basin of the Severn. And they will merge with waters from South Wales and from Shrewsbury and the Midlands right up here by Rugby. Instead of going to London to see the Queen, they're going to join the sea at the Bristol Channel. And these two eventual destinations, London uh, and Bristol, are well over a hundred miles apart but the rain only has to fall a few feet either side of the top of the hill to determine its eventual outcome. Jesus is crucified at the top of the hill. There are two men, one each on either side of him. These two men are also being crucified. They are also hanging on crosses. They are also dying but their destinations are very different. And their destinations are determined by what they say to Jesus. Amen.